five topics we're going to discuss is using less fuel through improved security and accountability. Number two, using different fuels such as alternative fuels. Three, using cheaper fuels such as alternative purchasing methods such as hedging and direct billing. And part two, how to save money with fuel beyond the pump. So fuel usage that you're using in the field with fleet cards. And then at the pump, communicating to improve maintenance. And again, we'll touch on each of these as we go through. Do you have a fuel management system or do you have to have a fuel management system in place in order to enact the ideas we're gonna present? And the answer is really no, although you'll find uh, there'll be many benefits to help you do your accounting with such. So please, if you don't have one today, or even if you're thinking of not buying one right away, um, we, I still encourage you to stay and listen to the webinar. It's really not meant to be a sales pitch in any way, shape, or form. Also, please note that while I'm presenting here, there's a compilation, again, of many resources uh, and derived from some of our clients and industry experts and industry publications. Action items from here, this icon we're gonna go through, you'll see this icon pop up throughout the presentation. Um, we'll give you specific changes or actions you can implement within your organization. So strategy number one, using less fuel through improved accountability and security. A saying attributed to management consultant Peter Drucker, who may actually have adapted it from the famous mathematician dating back into the 1800s, Lord Kelvin, if you cannot measure it, you cannot manage it. While it may not be true for everything you manage, it certainly is true for your consumable assets, and the biggest of which is probably fuel for your organization. You can measure it in many ways, from paper, spreadsheets, or automated technology. No matter, where our, no matter what method you're using today, you must start measuring it. An automated fuel management system to control your own fuel pumps on your own property for your own staff and vehicles can potentially provide you with the biggest ROI in, in, under this strategy. So action items here are start verifying people at the pump. Know who's using your fuel pumps, and that can be done from simple keypad entry to re using your existing employee ID cards um, or FOBs, again, to automate the capture of employee ID. Again, a keypad through any fuel management system on the marketplace, every, everyone has a keypad but it's the least secure way. And I can sit here and tell many stories about how somebody will write their employee number on the front door. And from that point forward, um, everybody who fuels at that site is employee number one, two, three, four, five. Uh, that's happened many times in my tenure in fuel management industry for many of my customers. So keep the fuel users integrated with your employee management system. So again, you know, your employees are all managed probably by a personnel type program, HR type program. Get some integration down with your fuel management system so that the minute somebody is terminated for employment or new employees are hired, they're automatically activated or deactivated in your fuel management system. Again, from my tenure in the industry, I can't begin to tell you how many times we find out in the fuel management database there's 10,000 employees for a uh, organization that has less than 2,000 employees uh, employed at any given time because they're never removing names um, from this type of a database. Another action item is verify the vehicle at the pump. Again, base systems start with keypad entry, though this is not much better than paper and pencil because you're still relying on the user to record it and record it accurately. Your next step up can be jumping to media for identifying vehicles, such as again, cards or keys. Because again, if I wanna play games with fuel, I'm not gonna use my own vehicle number. I'm gonna try to use a different one. And if you require media to identify the vehicle, that makes it more secure. Then you have onboard vehicle devices, which coupled with nozzle tags and a wireless automated type fueling system, it enables the data transmitting between the vehicle and an island controller to happen automatically. These methods totally remove the human element from entering data, and it's automatically captured every time a nozzle is inserted into the fuel tank, and or you can capture meter updates anytime a vehicle even just drives by a fuel island um, or fuel island controller. Um, again, an important component of that is also a fuel in the antenna or some type of device fastened around the fill neck of the gas tank that ensures once your vehicle is authorized for fuel that the nozzle stays in there while dispensing. 
Uh, again, my tenure has had customers that, again, can sit there while we're out looking at their fuel sites and watch a nozzle be passed from one vehicle to another vehicle. And while you can say your fuel is being accounted for in whole, it's not being charged and accounted for to the correct vehicles. With a wireless type system, you are insured that the fuel goes in the vehicle that it was designated for. Another action item is keep authorized fueling events in check, okay? Again, any fuel management system on the marketplace has data fields that can be filled out to ensure that you are setting proper fuel tank capacities, proper products allowed to a vehicle, um, proper demanding proper odometer readings for a vehicle. And again, many, many times we see uh, uh, from a standpoint of making the system easier to work with, especially when you begin implementing from nothing or no system, is people will often open these limits up wide or they will open them up wide to account for a very small portion of their fleet while the rest or bulk of their fleet uh, doesn't fit within those limits. By opening those limits up, you are opening yourself up to abuse and to getting some erroneous data, which won't help you. Um, achieve any type of ROI. So keep these things in check, make sure they're all set properly. And once they're set properly, then again, most management systems available have the ability to run exception reports. Okay, so if a car normally takes 15 to 18 gallons per week, you know, why is it suddenly using 40 gallons per week? Those should be exception reports set up so that you don't have to sit there and spend hours upon hours trying to evaluate the data. The system should be smart enough to allow you to run exception type reports so you're only looking at the data that requires your attention. Number two, strategy number two. Well, you know what, back up. I did, well, strategy number two, use different fuel by integrating alternative fuels, okay? Are alternative fuels and power sources right for you? So here's average pricing for fuel, as you can see on the chart, between July 1, July 15th, 2014. And as you can see there, as we'll talk about natural gas, is the lowest cost. Uh, $2.17 GGE. GGE stands for, obviously, a gasoline, a gasoline gallon equivalent, which allows you to compare um, the cost of natural gas against other liquid fuels, um, gasoline, diesel, so on and so forth. But you have to look at other, the other side of that. The considerations to, to need to be required are infrastructure, what type of infrastructure changes, and the cost of those infrastructure changes that are needed to dispense, as an example, CNG. Are there tax, uh, tax credits and or grants you can achieve in your organization by using this alternative fuel? What are your life cycle costs? So the upfront cost of the vehicle or engine equipped for the alternative fuel. Um, versus and adding into that any expected maintenance issues or differences in maintenance issues based on those types of vehicles. Again, you also have to consider the environmental impact. So an alternative fuel matrix here shown, we got gasoline, sulfur diesel, propane, your CNG, your LNG, and ethanol. Again, with some average pricing. Okay, but you have, again, maintenance issues to, to consider. When you get into the biodiesel and the B100 and so on, you have hoses and seals that are generally affected by the higher percent blends. Lubricity is improved over that of conventional diesel fuel. Uh, in the CNG world, you've got high pressure tanks that require periodic inspection and certification on top of, again, you know, uh, site requirements. LNG is stored in cryogenic tanks and with specific hold time before the pressure build is relieved. The vehicle should be operated on a schedule to maintain lower pressure in the tank. Um, again, LNG requires many site changes um, to be able to deal with it, not only at a fuel island, but also in your shop. And then ethanol, special lubricants may be required. Practices are very similar, if not identical, to those for conventionally fueled vehicles. Um, and as you can see, there's a small savings in comparison there at 323 a gallon. The price source we used here is from the Clean Cities Report of July 2013. So life cycle costs, things that may cost more, again, the cost of infrastructure, newer expanded facilities. On average, a CNG station costs at least 1.5 million to build, and we're gonna talk about a case study of one of our customers coming up. Um, increased inspections of tanks. Again, you have to consider the upfront cost of vehicles and the ongoing maintenance cost of such vehicles. 
you also potentially have additional costs for training and certifications of technicians to work on these type of vehicles. And are there any additional required inspections? Ways to offset costs when you're looking at alternative fuels. Government rebates and incentives are available. The example we're showing here is from the Florida Natural Gas Vehicle Coalition, which offers rebates to fund construction of natural gas vehicle fueling stations. The FNGVC has created over 1,820 jobs and 68 million in wages in 2014 through this program. Laws and incentives like this vary across the United States, but a very good source for you to consider and look what um, incentives are available to you is the U.S. Department of Energy's Alternative Fuel Data Center. Um, and we have the website here, and I'm, my understanding is this PowerPoint will be available in a PDF form, so no need to hurry up and write down that, write down that website. City of Columbus. So City of Columbus is a longtime customer of ours. Uh, they've opened the largest fast fill CNG station in Ohio, which I now think as of his presentation last week is in the entire Midwest. The cost of a station was $4.2 million, and as um, the gentleman always talks about in his presentations, um, I think his original budget for this site was uh, $2.5 or $2.8 million, and it ended up being $4.2 million because it was their first site and they ran into some unexpected um, variances from what they had planned in, in the construction. They did get grants from the Department of Energy and Clean Fuels Ohio that equaled about 1.1 million. He has added over 24 heavy duty CNG powered vehicles. Uh, another variable here that he's doing is he's opened his fuel sites to both fleet vehicles and the public. So he is allowing other trucking companies. Um, I know FedEx Freight, I know UPS, um, and several other large corporations are actually using his fuel site. His fuel sites are designed, and again, this goes all into the planning stages, but his fueling site is designed to handle 18-wheelers um, coming in and out with no traffic issues, with every fueling position still being able to be used. His expected savings are $80,000 annually in fuel costs, and his reduction in carbon emissions are equivalent to taking 96 vehicles off the road annually. Um, I believe this slide is based, again, on his first location. He is now has three locations open and planning for his fourth. So these numbers have changed drastically um, over the years since he first implemented. So action items here are work with professionals to plan your infrastructure and your processes. Again, um, they will admit in Columbus they learned a lot from their first location. He is very, very willing to share his ideas. Um, and we highly recommend people talk to him because he is quite experienced now and he's been giving speeches all over the country. Again, I heard him talk again last week in Sacramento. Engage your local government, look for these grants, get the buyout from everybody involved. Um, think beyond your fleet. Again, sometimes some of the grant money um, has a hook to it that you must let the public fuel. So several of our customers have added CNG to their fuel locations and they do let the public, you know, I always use John Doe as an example, come and fuel their vehicle. I think Columbus has taken that to the next level in inviting and doing studies prior to building these stations of local fleets who would use these stations and commit to using these stations. And again, they're, they're pretty big companies like UPS and FedEx and so on. Make sure you continue to track all of your vehicle changes, your costs and so on and so forth and your historical data so that you can calculate proper life cycle costs and that you actually are getting your ROI and saving the money on top of the other benefits of using alternative fuels. Strategy number three, using cheaper fuel through hedging and contracts and more. Again, cheaper fuel, when we talk about hedging, fuel hedging is re used to reduce or eliminate a company's exposure to fluctuating fuel costs. Uh, I think, you know, probably most of us know what that is, but basically you're locking yourself into a contract to buy a certain amount of fuel at a steady price. What that allows you to do is have a nice steady budget that's not fluctuating up or down, and obviously in latest years it's been going up in relation to fuel use. However, again, you do have the risk that if fuel prices drop, you are locked into that higher price for whatever volume you've committed to. Um, it's essentially a tool to reduce your risk. Hedging is about having an insurance policy against prices rising. Ben Brockwell, Director of Data Pricing Information Services at Opus. 
Very common in the airline industry. We do know some of our fleet customers are, are doing some hedging, but most notably used in the industry by Southwest Airlines, and one of their biggest attrib attributes to claiming profitability over past years when most airlines were not profitable. Again, how does fuel hedging work? You establish a contract that locks in a pre-negotiated price and quantity for months or years at a time. In order to properly do this, okay, you have to know your past fuel history use and what you're expecting in the future. So again, you wanna be as accurate um, when you're doing hedging as possible and historical data is what allows you to do that. If you go back to one of the first slides and imagine that you had signed a fuel contract for $3.50 per gallon in mid-2010 when the prices were rising, it would have been beneficial and detrimental through the last four years, as you can see by the green line going across the chart. If prices go up, you're a winner. However, again, if prices go down and, and or you need less fuel, you're still contracted to pay the higher price and purchase the contracted volume of fuel. Again, your biggest benefit, cost savings, and a stable fuel budget throughout the period of the contract. Another idea that can help you not so much save money, but help you recoup some of your fuel budgeted money is to go to direct billing your departments. Do you currently direct bill your departments for their fuel used or based on miles driven or a fixed cost? Okay, if you're billing the departments or users for, you, for the fuel, actual fuel they use, you can more accurately recoup your true fuel costs, and it also provides an incentive for departments to improve their own fuel usage. So again, almost like fuel hedging, if you just have a standard cost associated to any of your fleet vehicles, maybe the departments like it more because it's a steady budget for them, but now they can see if maybe a good portion of their fleet is driving um, economically versus some people who are not, now they're better incentivized to take action and correct those issues. So here's a little case from City of San Diego. Their former system for recovering fuel cost was included in an all-encompassing monthly, monthly charge per vehicle type, and it included all operational costs, such as maintenance, fuel, and GPS if they had GPS in the vehicles. Their new billing system allows them to bill departments not only see their actual fuel consumption, but reduce their actual operational costs. Uh, we asked John Clemens if he has documented specific fuel reductions from this. He has not, okay, but he says he is getting better buy-in from other departments, okay, monitoring vehicle activity and vehicle mile per gallon. Okay, again, to direct quote, I cannot say this is safe fuel or not, but the city of San Diego, like many other entities, is emerging from a recession, and as a result, there's a lot more vehicle activity, including additional vehicles and increased usage in support of additional city workers, police officers, etc. Repairing infrastructure, sidewalks, potholes, and everything that has been neglected and enhanced or revitalized city services. So he feels that they're getting better utilization for sure, and again, his departments are buying in for it. So action items here for this strategy were understand your fuel usage, tie your fuel usage to specific vehicles, okay, and, and hold vehicles and or employees accountable. Work with your own internal finance teams and or third party contractors to establish internal and external contracts. Some other resources, again, no need to copy this web um, address down, it'll be printed and available to anybody. Um, it was in Government and Fleet Magazine, did a very nice article. Um, valuable with valuable information for both public and private fleets. Um, they ran an article in June 2014 that gives a lot of details about how you can use contracts to save money. Um, again, great for even private fleets. Strategy number four, beyond the pump, managing fuel usage in the field with fleet type cards. So besides fueling at your own locations, a lot of organizations um, and clients we deal with also have to fuel on the outside based on their business needs. All fleets need a way to account for fuel purchase outside their own fuel pumps. So we're all familiar with gas cards and Wright Express and Voyager and so on and so forth. Options include reimbursements, corporate gas cards, fleet cards. The key question to ask yourself is what fuel data do I need regardless of where my driver fills up? And then make sure both your internal controls and external controls are giving you the information you need. For the sake of our discussion, we'll focus on the last two, gas cards and fleet cards. Gas cards. 
Cash cards can provide level two data versus fleet cards, which provide level three data. Here's a chart that's showing you the data differences that you can get from a level three type card. We're finding that most card suppliers are pushing more of the gas stations and, and fleet enterprises to go with level three data, but the whole country is certainly not available with level three data yet. Level three data gives you the ability to require an odometer reading at the time of purchase, and it allows you to place more comprehensive limits on purchases of fuel, um, do, such as dollar amounts per purchase, number of days per week, so on and so forth. Um, you know, Carrie and I had a discussion. Carrie and I had a discussion when we were setting up this PowerPoint. Of I'm old enough to be in this industry back in the days of the original Texaco Fleet Share card. And at that time, I worked for a company that managed 150 service stations. Some of those service stations were actually uh, convenience stores, too. So just like uh, any business that you're in, you always have pressures from above to increase your numbers. And part of our number increasing is always to increase sales in our convenience store. And even though the, the Texaco Fleet Share card had in big, bold print across the front, fuel purchases only, uh, many, many times you can walk into a convenience store and see them ringing up sales, cigarettes, coffee, donut every morning, and adding it to the cost of the diesel fuel. Again, as I explained, smart people back then would buy one cup of coffee, one donut, and one pack of cigarettes every day, so they maintained an accurate miles per gallon the entire week. The not-so-smart uh, people would come in at the end of the week and buy a carton of cigarettes and a case of beer, and now all of a sudden his miles per gallon is way, way off, as opposed to averaging like the other person did. Today's cards, especially level three data cards, you can now restrict, even though they still say fuel only on them, you can now restrict them to only work in a gas pump, and it will not work um, inside the building at a, at a regular credit card type machine. So again, kind of how the industry has evolved over time there. Um, again, with these type of cards, you want to be able to bring this data into your management system. Okay. Uh, again, a lot of our customers bring this data in from outside fuel purchases. Some do it weekly. Some do it monthly. Very few that I know of do it daily. Um, but it's, you know, depending on your contract and who your card supplier is. Um, we are actually coming out with a card called Trip Card, which provides automatic integration and in real time. So what happens there is when you use your fleet card out in the field, it will actually come into um, your fleet maintenance software program and update it in near real time. As soon as it's cleared at the bank, it will be cleared in our system. So how do you get data into the system? Importing versus integrating. Again, this kind of touches on the fleet cards. Most fleet management software can import a flat file provided by a credit card company. Again, most of our comp uh, clients do this monthly. Um, a flat file saves you manual entry time and it improves accuracy, but it may not be as timely as needed. True integration means the data flows as soon as the transaction is pre-authorized. So again, we're, we're about to offer clients the ability that as soon as they swipe the card and the pre-authorization comes in, that can hit your fleet focus database. And as soon as the sale is completed and it hits the bank, it's in your fleet focus database. What's critical about this, and we've talked to a lot of customers, again, if you're getting a very large file, um, monthly, and you're importing that data in monthly, to go back and try to reconcile those transactions, again, depending on the volume over a month, can be quite cumbersome and timely. Um, again, another factor that you want to take into play is, did they fuel at one of my, in, one of my own stations um, first thing, and then an hour later fill on the outside? You want to be able to compare those, and trying to compare those over um, a month's period of time is very difficult to do versus versus um, a real-time type integration. Again, with real-time type integration, you can have alerts to be set for unauthorized purchases or questionable purchases. Again, you should not have an in-house fuel transaction followed by an external fuel transaction within X time period. And again, you don't have to evaluate every transaction. You can set these alerts to automatically notify you which is critical, again, for comparing fuel purchases, both on an inside and outside. So action items here. Fuel cards can be purchased from a variety of vendors and have, often have many different benefits, such as the number of locations it can be used at, the card network and discounted fuel prices, and special type reporting and tax reporting. 
Data imports must be coordinated with your fleet service provider, your fleet software provider, as far as bringing that data in. AssetWorks offers a patent pending fleet card called Trip Card, which stands for the Timely Reportable Integrated Purchase Card which integrates directly into our fleet management software where it can be used for billing and reporting. This is in limited release right now, and phase one is gonna be to capture outside fuel transactions. Phase two, this would be able to be used for your parts room and P-card type purchases, um, and again, have that same type of integration. Strategy number five, at the pump, communicating to improve maintenance. Consider your fuel use for scheduling PMs. While meter readings are important and the basis of most PM pre preventive maintenance programs, some of our fleet customers have also implemented alternative ways to schedule a preventive maintenance program. Both the City of Seattle and the City of Kansas City use a combination of fuel, muse, fuel usage, total fuel usage, or meter readings to schedule PMs. A snapshot from the City of Seattle, one of the biggest reasons the City of Seattle selected Fuel Focus in 2009 was because it gave them the ability to capture accurate mileage. They identified three ways to schedule PMs in their program, so they changed totally with accurate meter readings how they were scheduling them, and they're based either mileage data feeds into the program, fuel data feeds into the PM program, or establishing time standards. The snapshot here, Again, they found that, um, we're well, using patrol cars here as an example, all patrol cars were previously had maintenance every four months. What they did that now is they changed to a patrol car will get maintenance either when it hits 4,000 miles, uses 425 gallons, or at a nine-month interval, whichever comes first. And basically, as you can see here, using an example of 10 patrol cars, um, that average, they average 30 PMs per year, okay, but based on their new program, okay, and hitting the numbers, one of the three categories up above of the 4,000 miles, 425 gallons for nine-month intervals, okay, they're stretching out PMs and doing a whole lot less PMs based on these um, factors. Again, some vehicles might be happening more, other vehicles are happening much, much less, and based on that, Okay, uh, direct quotes from Dave Seavey, calculate the number of PMs you'd reduce, meaning you're technically over-maintaining your vehicles. Calculate those cost savings that you achieve, and calculate the labor hours that you're saving that you could spend somewhere else and doing other type of work. City of Kansas City, a little plug for the Royals there who didn't do very well last night, but we'll see how they work out. Uh, Kansas City's been rolling this out one vehicle class at a time for the last two years. They set an average mile per gallon value and the amount of fuel that equals 3,000 miles. PMs are now scheduled by the fuel used, miles driven, or the backup time trigger of nine months also for sedans and light duty vehicles. Their results, one huge advantage to moving to tracking usage by fuel consumption has, has been that they've been able to support a new citywide utilization policy. Okay. They've not quite noted any fuel savings yet per se, but they find the bigger win is in the utilization of their vehicles. And they're still working on tracking savings, but it's the basis of their now being used as the basis for their vehicle replacement plan. And you know, a quote from them again is, for years they had no vehicle replacement plan, and now this is providing them the mechanism to get this set up and implemented. So again, make the fuel pump your communication tool, data into your system. Require the meter readings at the fuel pump. Again, you can manually input those meter readings or you can get them automatically through an RFID type device, but either way, validate them and set the settings in your software program up properly so that you are guaranteed to get lockdown readings. Don't open those, don't open those values up to account for a small portion of your fleet. Um, get those settings proper to demand a good meter reading. Again, stop fueling for unvalidated readings. Make sure a meter reading entered makes sense. Don't allow the most common meter reading in the world, 9999999. Again, a lot of our customers enforce valid meter. A lot of our customers do not. Most of We try to encourage most of our municipality customers, at the very least, to enforce valid meter on every vehicle class and every type of vehicle, with the exception of emergency response. You know, you don't want to be the guy who says he couldn't uh, answer a police call or an ambulance couldn't go out because he couldn't get fuel because he's punching in 99999 as a meter reading. But again, that doesn't mean you have to open it up for your entire fleet. 
Again, apply exception reporting to notice the odd readings, such as meter readings that is much larger or smaller expected based on normal use. So again, proper setup, proper classification of vehicles um, can allow whatever fuel management system you have, um, internal or external, to work the way it should work and give you the data that you really need. Alert your drivers that preventive maintenances are due with messaging at the fuel pump. So again, if you have your own system, maybe it has the capability to automatically alert them. Um, again, we can configure ours to automatically alert the driver at the fuel controller when they're fueling. You also have the ability to restrict them from fueling if their vehicle is overdue for PM. I mean, uh, again, we all know that if your vehicles are running properly, they're running more economically. So you want to restrict them if they haven't brought their vehicle in for a long period of time. Make the fuel pump a communication tool. Again, talk directly to your vehicles. There's many different ways, again, and many different systems that offer some sort of an onboard device available on the marketplace. Again, it eliminates the human input, which eliminates the human error. Okay, so there's devices such as passive GPS, which is similar to active GPS, obviously, but without the monthly cellular charges. Okay, again, unlike active GPS, the data is not available in real time, but when they come back to your fuel island um, or similar pickup location, you're importing that data into the system. It's giving you more data points to evaluate and make sure your driver's driving the way he should be and where he should be and not where he shouldn't be. Um, we also have, you know, there's capabilities of a small device that plugs right into your OBD2 port, whether you use a Y cable or not. Again, this data can download using RFID as part of the fuel management system or standard Wi-Fi to transmit the information direct from the vehicle engine to the fuel pump or your fuel management or fleet management system. Again, with passive GPS, your vehicle information as well as location breadcrumb and activity history are stored in the unit until they come in for fueling, whether they stop for fueling or drive by or your maintenance location. How does this help you save money on fuel? Well, again, meter readings. Meter readings are important. Um, not, an accurate meter reading is much better than 99999. So the automated meter readings um, are very important. Uh, most of these devices available on the marketplace can also provide you with diagnostic trouble codes. Okay, diagnostic trouble codes can alert you to the vehicle not running properly, not running at its most economical fashion. And again, what do you want to do with this data? You want it to trigger an event and automatically notify you that the vehicle needs service. Again, there's a lot of times where people will have a check engine light on in their vehicle for weeks, if not months on end, and will not bring the vehicle in because, quite frankly, it's not their vehicle, and as long as it starts for them, they're going to go and do what they need to do. So bringing that information in helps you maintain your vehicles better, which makes them more fuel efficient. With these types of devices, you can also have driver behavior data, such as idle times, speed histories, um, G-force events, and things of that nature. This gives management facts they need to better train drivers in fuel-efficient driving techniques. Again, there is study after study after study out there about um, driver behavior and how that can affect your fuel economy um, on top of many other things like insurance and things of that nature. A vehicle that is driven optimally is more fuel-efficient, obviously, as well. Okay, snapshot of the City of Los Angeles. The City of Los Angeles had an audit back in March 2012 okay, of the citywide fuel usage. Their audit was based on a sampling of five departments, which included police, fire, GSD, recreation and parks, and the convention center. The city purchases $26.6 million, or 13.8 million gallons of fuel each year. The results of the audit determined that an amount of $7 million, which is roughly 25% of their spend, was dispensed through what the controller of LA described as high-risk transactions. High-risk transactions were defined as actions taken that indicate a potential misuse of public resources or a use for non-city related business. Can you imagine if your audit was one quarter of your annual spending on fuel was determined to be suspicious? The high-risk transactions for the city were categorized into four methods of high-risk conduct. Number one, bypass transactions. When the locked panel is removed, an electronic switch is deactivated to allow a user to dispense fuel without identifying the vehicle. That should be without identifying the vehicle. Um, again, every type of fuel management system on the marketplace has the ability to go into bypass in case it's ever needed, whether it's for a hardware failure or storm recovery and you have other people fueling or there's many, many different reasons people do it. 
Um, again, a common one is the pump and tank contractor comes out to make a repair and needs to pump some test gallons. We'll put a system in bypass, pump his test gallons, get a phone call, be distracted, and never take it out of bypass. Um, again, keypad, another area was keypad entry tra transactions, where it's simply relying on somebody entering data. And again, there's no validation that if I punch in, I'm at hose one and truck 10, that truck 10 is actually even there. So again, talking about uh, previous slides of having at least some form of media, if not an RFID device, would make that issue completely go away or certainly contain it much better. MasterCard type transactions doesn't mean MasterCard is in credit card. It means a lot of fuel management systems have a generic card that is used um, for many, many reasons. Uh, might be I left my normal fuel card at home. I need to fuel my vehicle. I can go inside and get a MasterCard that's um, located somewhere inside the shop or establishment, go out, charge fuel to that master account. Number one, it's not being billed to my vehicle. Um, and, and or now, since it's not being billed to my vehicle, much more subject to uh, suspicious activity. And then the use of four types of fuel credit cards that they had, which were used at city-owned gas facilities and or commercial gas stations. So again, this goes back to the maintaining of your data for both in-house and outside type fuel transactions. Okay, again, they were getting a file once a month and importing it into their program. And when you're talking thousands and thousands of vehicles over a month's period of time, uh, the controller didn't feel that all of these departments were doing proper investigation. Again, if they see that truck 10 got fuel at the local Exxon station on Monday at 10 a.m., why did he fuel internal Monday at 9 a.m.? And again, if you have a fully integrated and near real-time type system, those type of notifications can happen automatically and possibly help you in those areas. So again, a wrap up. The five fuel saving strategies we talked about is using less fuel through improved security and accountability, using different fuel types such as alternative fuels. Again, we picked on CNG. Using cheaper fuel, um, alternative fuel purchasing, okay, same type of fuel, but doing it through hedging and or locking into long-term contracts and or direct billing your clients so that you know that you're totally recouping your fuel budget at minimum. Managing fuel beyond the pump, which again talks about the use of fleet cards out in the field. And then managing fuel at the pump, which is ways of communicating um, to improve maintenance by demanding the proper um, information, so on and so forth. Since we presented such a variety of things, we'll leave this up to you to help remind you. And um, you guys, we can be open for questions. Thanks, Joe. Um, appreciate everybody. If you um, can type your questions into WebEx's chat feature, um, when you log in and you get that little ribbon up at the top, there's a button up there that says chat. You can just type it in, and then I will go ahead and read them. Um, Joe, our first question that we got um, was, do you know if the city of Seattle noticed any change in maintenance issues when they switched to tracking fuel instead of just going every four months? Um, I do not, but we have a very good relationship with the city of uh, Seattle, and we can certainly try to get you that answer. I, I actually know the answer to that because um, – I worked with Dave Seavey on that. He gave the keynote at our 2003 users conference, and he said that they did not have any problems. They did not have any increase in unscheduled maintenance when they made that switch. So we didn't put that in the webinar, but that is they, they did not notice any problems. So um, excellent. Then our second question that we got was, um, if you're using alternative fuels and you have fuel focus, are you able to if you have fuel focus and you want to add alternative fuels, can you track that through fuel focus? Um, absolutely. Anything that can be metered and pulsed can go through fuel focus. So currently today, obviously besides your unleaded, your diesel, your ethanols, and things of that nature, we are monitoring CNG, we are monitoring propane, we are monitoring LNG at a half a dozen locations in California, and we're even monitoring hydrogen at the city of Riverside. So again, anything that can be metered and pulsed, whether gas, liquid, or lubricants, can certainly go through not only fuel focus, but other fuel management systems um, sh should be able to handle it also. Again, going back, to, going back to my conversation on some of that outside funding, again, that outside funding was based on you being able to um, open your station up to the public for that alternative fuel, fuel focus, as do most other fuel management systems that I'm aware of 
have the capability of accepting a credit card for those type of purchases so that you're not billing the public for those transactions. Cool. Thank you. Um, our third question is, is all about the fleet cards as well, and it was saying that when you look at it, it seems like is there a difference in cost between a fleet card and a fuel card? And if not, why would you choose to use a fuel card when a fleet card seems to have a lot more functionality? Again, if we're talking about the differences between level two and level three, um, your, your, your negotiated discounts, your negotiated type of reporting that's available from whatever card supplier you're getting um, is often available from any of them and, and or, you know, nego a negotiation factor when you sign up for a card. But when we go to level two and level three, it's not really part of a negotiation. It's more about where you're fueling. If you're fueling at an Exxon or a mobile or a name brand type station, they're mostly almost directly online with banks or credit card clearinghouses to authorize a fuel transaction, okay? Um, level three type data, again, is just more modern machines and POS type devices. And again, while the credit card companies are pushing suppliers to go to level three type data terminals and or upgrades in the commercial pumps or retail pumps to be able to accept level three data, that's more... Uh, related to the technology that's out in the marketplace. Within a few years, I imagine level two data will mostly go away as, as the um, infrastructure in the country upgrades. Thank you. Uh, another question along those lines is, uh, do you know when the, the trip card is going to be available for all the different versions of Fleet Focus? Currently, TripCard is being tested only under the Fleet Focus M5 side of the fence. I do not have an exact date, but we're hoping um, we're hoping that development will is at least going to start um, no later than first quarter of 2015 for Fleet Focus FA customers. Okay, fantastic. Um, we've got one more along the the Fleet Card side of things. Is um, is kind of two questions related? Can we limit an outside agency's fueling locations, um, and can automated alerts be set up to alert alert when an outside agency fuels at a location outside of their normal fueling locations. So, Amy, um, if it's okay with you, I'll un unmute you so you could explain that a little bit, because I'm not sure what you mean by outside agency. Hold on one second. Let me find you to unmute you. Or type it in the window. Here we go. Unmute. Here we go. Amy, are you able to talk? I think your phone might still be on mute. Hello? Uh -huh. There we go. Can you hear me? Yes. You can hear me now? We can hear you now. Yes. Okay. Um, what I mean is that we're Oregon Department of Transportation, and we have our bulk sites with the um, fuel focus card lock units installed. And we have uh, IGAs with, uh, like, uh, local counties that fuel at our sites. And they are issued, their vehicles are issued a fuel card, um, by me, the proxy cards that I got from you guys. And what we have found is uh, people are typing in the fuel card number and they're mistyping it. So say um, Cascade Locks County, which is northern Oregon, somebody is typing their fuel card in South Beach where Curry County is, so I would like to limit it that Curry County can only fuel in Curry County at our ODOT-owned bulk fuel site. And in, same for with these other counties. They can only fuel at our ODOT sites that are within that county. There's a couple different ways we can handle that, and we should probably talk offline about it. The okay. first thing that I'm hearing is that we probably would want to do is limit them that you cannot key punch in their fuel card number and only allow them to waive it. I don't know why you're allowing them to key punch it in because that's opening you up to, you know, a potential abuse. I completely agree. And so, if you can tell me how we can do that, that would be wonderful. Okay, so that's a very easy prompt change that uh, you can send an email to fuel support and we can certainly get that done for you very, very easily. Well, um, in relation, there are different. Because of, go ahead. I mean, there are different ways we can limit, as you asked for, you know, County A to only fill in County A locations and County B to do that. A um, little more cumbersome in uh, how how we would handle that. 
without any changes um, or, you know, or software updates or anything to that effect, and we'll talk about that offline. Perfect. I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Um, we have uh, – oh, is there any more there? I don't want to cut you off. Um, no, we have another question that has to do with um, – Fuel focus itself, and it says, are the pulse readers electrical or mechanical? Okay. Um, we can take pulses from an electronic pulse or from a mechanical pulse. So I'm not sure if that answers the question, but we can read from pretty much any type of dispenser that's out there. So we have direct integration with electronic pumps. Um, similar to the way our black box can talk to a vehicle computer, instead of actually counting pulses and determining how many gallons are dispensed, um, or pretty much talk to an engine computer and get a meter reading, we can do the same thing with electronic dispensers. Instead of counting a pulse, at the end of the transaction, the pump says, I just dispensed 20.3 gallons. And again, I've been in the industry since 1989. I can't begin to tell you how many times I've heard, even to this day, my pumps belong in the Smithsonian Institute. Um, if there's a mechanical pulser available for that dispenser, we can certainly capture that mechanical pulse and translate that to gallons also. Okay. There, there was also a secondary question in the same realm of, is DEF dispensing as a second pump available? Um, again, we can monitor anything that can be metered and pulsed. Um, a lot of our customers are currently adding DEF um, to their existing systems, uh, be, it, be it mine, fuel focus, or be it any other one. Again, you just have to have another pump input capability on, on your fuel management system to capture those pulses from that DEF dispenser. Thank you very much. Um, and the last question is, where can I find more information related to um, hedging fuel strategies? I'll let you answer that one. <laughs> I will take that one. Uh, we've got a couple of sources that we use when pulling together this information that I'll, I'll put on the webinar slides, and we're going to send this webinar out. Um, the recording will be available on the support site, and we'll send everybody a link to it. Uh, we'll also send a link to this PDF so you can download it, and all the links that we've included will be live, so you can click right from the PDF to the website. So I would definitely um, work with your internal agencies because it's a contractual thing, so there's often a lot of legal things that are are far beyond the realm of what we do. So. Excellent. Well, if anybody will give another two or three minutes, um, and we'll hang on here if you have any follow-up questions. Um, as always, you can always email us. You can email it to um, joe, joe.bazil at assetworks.com or um, communications at assetworks.com. Myself and a couple other people check that uh, email address as well. And we appreciate everybody taking the time today. So thank you very much. Joe, if you don't mind sticking around, we'll hold on in case anybody else has some follow-up questions. Sure. And right. thank you also, everybody, for attending. Thank you.